come to the most significant part of the talk tonight. This is about revolutionizing how government operates. This is time for the big vision. There's a better way to do things in government, and that's what I want to share with you now. I call it the river of opportunity. And let me set the stage for you. Before our country was even founded, why did people come to America? And after it was founded, why do people continue to come, and why do they come today? We are the land of opportunity. That's what makes us who we are. Now, the issue is, is do you have a fair chance to have that opportunity in our country? If you happen to be in the mainstream of the river of opportunity, and you grew up in a great family with wonderful parents supporting you, you went to a good school, you got good advice when you were looking for a career, you found a good first job, you build a career, you're on that path to great opportunity. If you look at it, what's government's role in that situation? Government's actually in the background. It's still there. It's doing things like public safety, important things, but it's in the background of your life. In fact, you're a contributor to helping others. And you do that through multiple mechanisms. Paying taxes is helping. I know you may not feel that way, but that's the point. You're helping contribute to charities, to churches, to nonprofits to help people. You're volunteering your time to help people. Everyone in America fundamentally wants to help other people. And you're one of those people doing that. I'm proud to say I was fortunate enough to be in that mainstream personally. I grew up in a 900 square foot house in Battle Creek. My father owned a small wind and cleaning business. My mother was a homemaker. We never had a lot, but I never wanted for anything. I accepted that, and they were wonderful. And I was fortunate enough to be in that mainstream of the river of opportunity that now I can stand here as governor of the state of Michigan. How do we create opportunities for those of the people that are not in the mainstream of this river of opportunity is the question. And why do people fall out of the mainstream or are not in it? In some cases, they don't have parents or they don't have parents at home. They have severe poverty in their family. They may be in a situation where either to get to school or get to work, they need transportation and it's not there, creating a barrier to success. They may have an illness. They may have a disability. They need government support and nonprofit support. Government moves to the forefront then. And how do we help them succeed? Now, how have we done this in the country? If you go back to the 1930s, we built a system that was about adding programs. And these are good, well-intentioned people. But if you look back over the last 80 years, what have we done? We've added prescriptive program after prescriptive program. Where do we stand today? We've counted 145 plus programs already and still counting. 35 in healthcare, 40 in workforce, 70 in child services. The system is failing, folks. That's not how you solve the problem of helping people have opportunity. What we've done is we've sliced and diced people into programs. We've moved away from treating them as real people. In fact, in some cases, we've taken some of their dignity away as a person by putting them through so many programs. The other problem with all these programs is what have we done? Quite often, we're addressing symptoms. We're not addressing root causes. We're actually facilitating dependency on government. That's not right. We've also built a lot of bureaucracy and inefficiency in the system, and that's not right. In fact, if you look at it, and where is our society today, and you look at people that are in the mainstream of the river and people that not, that gap of difference is only increasing. That's unacceptable. And we should not take it. We need to stand up and say there's a better way to do things. And how is that? It is time to step back and say, let us restructure government to create the river of opportunity by understanding that we're talking about people, not programs. And there are five guiding principles we need to stand up and say we should be following to help create opportunities for success for people. The first one is, again, it's about people, not programs. The second point is, it's about root causes, not symptoms. Third, it's about maximizing results, not spending money in government programs. Fourth, it's about recognizing it's just not about government. This is about community. This is about friends and neighbors. We need to engage the entire community. We need to be that village of support together. And fifth, we need to measure outcomes and results. And what's the measurement of success? It's not how many people are facilitating or maintaining their dependency. It's how many people 
that were outside of that mainstream of opportunity that we have now moved into the mainstream so they can be successful. That's what this is about. The question in your mind is to say, that's great talk, Governor, but is it doable? It is absolutely doable. We have been doing it in the state of Michigan on a pilot basis for several years now. Now is the time to expand, to roll it out, to bring it in a bigger fashion to everyone in our state. Let me mention two of those programs. One is Pathways to Potential, a program we started several years ago where we asked caseworkers to leave the government office. They were happy to. We put them in the local schools. We have caseworkers in 219 schools in 22 counties in our state. They're now there with the kids that they're there to help, with their families, seeing what their lives are like, not in some government office. Is it making a difference? There are many metrics and measures of success, but I'll give you just one. Chronic absenteeism, one of the key constraints to success, is down by one-third in the schools where we have pathway people versus where we do not. That is success. Another case is helping the structurally unemployed, the people that have not been successful at getting in the workforce, having that opportunity to be on that path of the mainstream again. So several years ago, we created this program with solely state dollars because the federal programs were simply not good enough to be flexible enough. So how is that program done? We've now placed over 3,000 individuals in over 100 companies with a retention rate of nearly 70%. It's making a huge difference in people's lives, and I can give you an illustration. The number one reason we found for the people we've been servicing that they couldn't either get training or work to be successful, it was a lack of transportation. And by having the ability to have these wrap services to look at the big picture, we've been able to work on that. This is the kind of attitude.